War. War never changes. <laughs> ah, and what a lovely place we have stopped in. Unsure what this town is called. Hmm. And I'm sure that I was unable to admire the sights in my drunken stupor. Hmm, somebody's left some thistle out for Brandar. I shall make good use of this. Hmm, much better in a potion than sitting on a barrel, hmm? And it seems nothing over this way. A little bit of wine, but just the smell of it makes me wretch. I've had a bit too much wine in the past uh, day or so. Ah, but our senses seem to be recovering well. Hmm, let us see if we can find a guard. Hello there. Hello well, there, I said. The Dawn God. Vampire yeah. hunters or something. Yes, in Dawn fort, Guard, least, indeed. Brandar said no to them. Myself. First time in Markarth, Traveler? Take my advice. You see anything, don't get involved. The city guard will take care of it. Markarth, eh? Hmm, nice city you have here. Uh, is there some sort of problem in the city? I heard you talking about the Dawn Guard. Perhaps you have some vampires lurking about. Brandard does have some experience and uh, could be persuaded to take care of your problem for just a bit of coin, hmm? See, there you go, getting involved. Don't ask too many questions in Markarth. Safer for everyone that way. Head on in. Keep your nose clean, and you won't have any problems with us. Interesting. Seems to me these guards are uh, hiding something or other. But, uh... We've got a bit of other things to take care of, you see. I heard about the, uh, the mage in solitude that I might learn some new tricks from. Yes, I think this is the way out. City gate? Sure enough. Hello there. Yeah. Yes. What do you want? I, I I wanted to talk to you. You're not in a talking mood, Mr. Orc? I understand. His kind Outside is uh, somewhat standoffish to people they don't know. That is not my Richard. Hmm. I thought for sure Richard would be out here somewhere waiting for Daddy. Hmm. Seems not. Unfortunately, it is I who left him this time. I can only hope that he will forgive me. You know, I get a bit of the drink in me and then... Who knows what happens after that. Ah, uh, but apparently I should stop by... Where is that place? Hmm. Should stop by the little town. What is it called? Starts with an R. Mm, Rorikstead, that's right. This is the place that I must head to Rorikstead. <laughs> eh. And then on to Solitude. And uh, somewhere they're waiting for me to start this raid. The storm cloaks, but uh, they did not give me good directions. I'm sure that I'm more than just a little bit lost at this point. Uh, I could go back to Windhelm, ask a few questions about where I'm supposed to be going, but it is such a long trip back that way. Hmm, my feet do not fancy it. Do you fancy it, feet? They say no. They say no indeed. My. I hear something big up this way. What could it be? A bear? A troll? It is a bear. Hello! Greetings! <laughs> right in my face you are! Okay, that's fine. Everything is, is normal here. Uh, oh my. This is not good. Where's my fire? I require my fire. Oh, he's so strong. Don't uh, fancy a fight with this bear. Up, up, up. Bears climb trees, they don't climb rocks. This is one thing Brandar has learned. Can't seem to quite reach him from here. That is fine. 
My fire needn't reach him. My arrow surely will. And I've missed. Seems the drink has had more of an effect than I like to think, hmm? Ah, where are you, Mr. Bear? Stand right there. That's fine. You think you're so scary standing up? <laughs> well, I still stand higher than you on this rock. Ah. I heard you. I heard you around the corner, and I could have chosen another way. But instead... I will not falter. And you could simply leave if you chose to let me pass. But you couldn't do that either, could you, hmm? These arrows are quite useful. Look at him run. That's right. Away with you. <laughs> ah. Victory for Brandar, yes. Oh, does he come back? Hmm. I'm watching for you. Oh, he's watching for me as well. Good little bear on the hill. You care for some of this, huh? Come then. I shall taste Brandar's wrath! Ah! <laughs> ah. Not as scary as he looks. I shall harvest his claws, but uh, I shall leave you clothed in your pelt for now, Mr. Bear. Thank me later. Ah, and it seems another stone over this way. What powers might it hold? I have not uh, changed my, my sign in some time. Some people say you can't change your star sign. Well, I've come to learn that's not entirely true. Oh, the Lover's Stone. Right near the Temple of the Bella and Markar. That uh, makes good sense to me, huh? Let us see. Those under the sign of the Lover always feel the Lover's Comfort. All skills improve faster. Oh, instead of just my uh, warrior skills. Yes. I take this sign. Oh, the power of the Bella flows through me. I want to go hug somebody. Anybody out there want a hug from Brandar? I won't dig my claws into your back. Unless you ask me to. <laughs> oh, this is quite a river. Brandar must watch his step here, I think. Ah, in the bird's nest. Little bit of breakfast for later, hmm? It's quite nice, yes. Uh, let us see if we can find a way around this river. Seems these rocks pass over the top. Oh, there's so much water here. And on top of it being water, it is cold water, which I like even less. Hmm. Well, the bridge, the bridge, just down this way. That is what I'm looking for. Wonderfully done. Look how beautiful this land is, hmm? Ah, such a place. We are lucky to have made it this far, friends. If I was to choose between the swamps of Morrowind and the cold mountains of Skyrim, I suppose I would choose Skyrim. Of course, Cyrodiil being the most temperate is uh, my favorite of the entire bunch that we've been to so far. And elsewhere, of course, the very, very best, but uh, that is no longer an option, unfortunately. Oh, seems someone has set up camp here. Little bit of nightshade out front. Hmm, goat head. I wonder if it is uh, trolls or bandits. Bandits usually do keep a cleaner camp. I suspect it is trolls. But let us find out for sure. Blind Cliff Cave. Hmm. Ah. It seems a wild man has taken up residence here. Well, I apologize for this. I hope you are not the friendly type. Indeed he's not. He's a bit uh, too stupid to follow the direction of my arrow. 
He simply goes and looks where the arrow has landed. There we are. <laughs> Down he goes. I'm sorry this had to happen to you, my friend. Hmm. Interesting. Seems, uh, many things in this cave. What is this? A mask of some sort. Interesting. Yes, these wild men have uh, taken up residence. We should clean it out for the civilized people. Like Brantar. But there's a bit of water here. Mm, perhaps I'd best be on my way. Don't really want to dip my feet in. Okay, one, two, three. Ah, it got me. Just a little bit. I will need to dry my paws. Ah, no wonder they have set up residence here. A beautiful cave it is. Brandar might like to take it for himself. Hmm. If I were so inclined to live in a cave. But I am not. Oh, you've spotted me, have you? Fine then. Have it your way. Fire! Fire for the woodsman. <laughs> Where did you go? Oh, he's got some friends with him. Burn. There he goes. Run from me. And there we are. Two down. I think one to go. My nose says only one. But my nose has been known to be wrong before. Oh. I seem to have lit this oil ablaze. Well, we'll wait for that to go out. Have a look through these woodsman's pockets. Hmm. Doesn't seem they keep much. No, indeed. Hmm, potion of water breathing? Pfft, I won't be using that. Maybe I can sell it. Far be it for me to uh, have some water over my head. No, indeed. It's bad enough just getting it on my feet. And I sincerely hope that that was worth it. That this cave might hold some treasures for Brandar. Hmm. There. Wandering. Looking for me. Well, it seems you found the kitty. Hello, hello. Greetings. So nice to meet you. If I meet you, I will turn you into me. <laughs> there you are. Lay down. Oh, that was a pretty cool flip down the stairs, wasn't it? Very nice. I'd like to learn that trick sometime. Hmm, does her friend spot me? Hmm. I think she is on to me. Perhaps, perhaps. Let us uh, inform her where we are. Yes? Oh, it seems you've moved. Please don't move. Stand still for Brandar. He appreciates that. Oh my. She knows some magic of her own, does she not? Well, no matter. They shall show her that fire always overcomes frost. <laughs> there she goes, hiding away, just as I would expect the wood people to do. Ugh. Bit of fire. She's got some fire as well. There we are. Try not to get lit. The fur burns quicker than the leaves. There we are. A little more for you, huh? Yes, from quite a distance. Ah, and we've made a nice pile here. How lovely. Hmm. She seems to hold some mushrooms. Perhaps I will find some nice alchemical ingredients here. It seems to go up quite a ways. 
Hmm, dug into the mountain they have. Hmm, what sort of goods do you have in the barrel? Carrots, carrots, cabbage. Oh, they seem to love carrots. Carrots and salt. Yes, indeed. Quite a healthy life they live. Hmm, don't you have any meat? And I would much enjoy some meat. And here are some towers. But I could have sworn there was another path. Down this way. Perhaps it does loop around. Hmm. What is all this? Chest, you say? Refugees book. Hmm, perhaps we have a look, yes? The smell of the bay oozed through the stones of the cellar, salt and brine decay. The cellar itself had its own sense of old wine turned to vinegar, mildew, and the more exotic spices of herbs the healers had brought with them to tend to the wounded. There were more than fifty people squeezed into the big earthen room which had once been forgotten storage for the brothel above. The groaning and whimpering had ceased for now, and all was still, as if the hospital had turned into a mass grave. Mother, a red guard boy whispered, what was that? The boy's mother was about to answer him when there was another rolling roar from outside, which grew louder and louder, as if some great but incorporeal beast had come into the cellar. The walls trembled, and dust burst from the ceiling in a rain of powder. Unlike the last time, no one screamed. They waited until the weird haunting sound had passed, and then was replaced by the soft rumble of the distant battle. A wounded warrior began whispering Mara's prayer for, from the doomed. Mankar, a Bosmer woman curled up in a cot, hissed, her eyes feverish, flesh white and wet with flesh was white and wet with sweat. He's coming. Who is coming? asked the boy, grasping his mother's skirt tight. What do you think, lad? The sweetsmonger? A grizzled one-armed red guard growled. The Cameron usurper. The boy's mother shot an angry look at the old warrior. She doesn't know what she's saying. She is sick. The boy nodded. His mother had usually been right, but he had not yet even been born when people were began whispering that the Cameron usurper was coming towards her little village. She had packed up their belongings to flee. Their neighbors had laughed at her. She said, saying that their that Rehad and Tanath would handily defeat him. Her husband, Lucar's father, who he had never met, had also laughed at her. It was the harvest time, and she would miss out on the celebrations, but his mother, Miyakai, was right. Two weeks after she had fled the village, she heard the tale that it had been obliterated during the night with no survivors. Rehad and Tanith had both fallen. The usurper was unstoppable. Lucar had been born and grown up in refugee camps throughout Hammerfell. He had known, never known a friend for more than a few days. He knew that when the sky burned red to the west, they would pack up and move east. When it burned to the south, they moved north. At last, after twelve years of moving from camp to camp, they had taken passage across the Iliac Bay to the province of High Rock in the barony of Dwinnen. There Miyakai had promised and hoped that they would have a peaceful permanent home. It was so green there, it blinded him. Unlike Hammerfell, which was only green in certain seasons and in certain places, Dwinnen was verdant all year round, until winter tide, when it began to snow, and Lucar had fr at first been frightened of it. He was ashamed to think of that now, when there was real danger. But the red clouds of war, the stink and pain of the refugee camp, that was at least familiar. Now the red sky was on the horizon of the bay and coming closer, and he longed for the days when a scattering of white made him cry. Mankar, the Bosmer woman, cried out again. He's coming, and he will bring death. No one is coming, said the pretty young Breton healer, coming to the woman's side. Hush now. Hello, came a voice from above. The whole room, almost together as one, gasped. A Bosmer limped down the shoddy wooden stairs. His friendly face very obviously not that of the Cameron usurper. Sorry if I frightened you, he said. I was told there were healers here, and I could use a little help. Rosayana hurried to look at the Bosmer's wounds on his leg and his chest. Disheveled but still beautiful, she was one of the favorites at the brothel, who had learned her healing skill along with 
her more vocational skills at the house of the Bella. She carefully but quickly pulled the red leather curious chausses, tassets, greaves, and boots off him and placed them to the side while she examined the injuries. The old red guard warrior picked them up and studied them. You were in the war? Next to it is probably a better way to put it, the Bosmer smiled, wincing slightly at Rosé on his touch. Behind it, beside it, in front of it, my name's Orban Elmlock. I'm a scout. I try to avoid the real battle so I can get back and report what I see. A good job for people who don't like the color of their own blood very much. Zim, said the warrior, shaking Orban's hand. I can't fight anymore, but I can fix up this armor if you're going to return. You're a leathersmith? Nah, no, just a jack of all trades, replied Hizim, opening up a small canister of wax to prep the hard but flexible leather. I could tell you were a scout from the armor, though. Can you tell us what you've been spying on? We've been down in here half a day now with no word from the outside. The entire Iliac Bay is one great battlefield on the waves, said Orban, and sighed as Rosianna Spell began to close his jagged but shallow wounds. We've shut off the invasion from the mouth of the bay, but I was coming from the coast, and the enemy's armies marching over the Rothgarian Mountains. That's where I had my little scuffle. It's not too surprising. Moving moving the flank in from the side while the front battle's occupied. It's a play right out of Cameron Calta's book of tricks the Heart King borrowed. The Heart King? Lucar asked. He had been listening quietly, understanding everything except for that. Haman Cameron, the Cameron usurper. Haman Heart King. They're all the same, lad. He's a more complicated fellow, and he needs more than one name. You know him? Miyakai asked, stepping forward. Near on twenty years before this whole black, bloody business, I was Cameron House's chief scout, and Haman was his sorcerer and advisor. I helped them both when they were vying for the Cameron throne, and begin the conquest of- Ouch! Rosayana had ceased her healing. With eyes of fury, she had reversed her spell, and the closed, mended wounds were opening again, dark infections returning. She held him with surprising strength when Orban tried to pull back. You bastard, the healer Cortison hissed. I have a cousin in the Falstani, a priestess. She's fine, Orban yelped. Lord Kaltos was very adamant about not harming anyone who didn't pose a threat. I think the people of Kavach would disagree with that assessment, said Hazim coldly. That was the hor most horrible, worst thing I have ever done, Orban nodded. Kaltos wept when he saw what Haman had done. My master did everything he could to stop it, begging the Heart King to return to Valenwood, but he turned on Kaltos, and we fled. We're not your enemy, and we never have been. Kaltos could, could do nothing to prevent the horror that the usurpers brought to the Colobian West in Hammerfell, and he's fought for more than fifteen years to prevent more. The frightening, bestial roar passed through the cellar again, even louder than before. The wounded could not help groaning in helpless terror. And what is that? Mia Guy sneered. Another of Cameron Kaltos's tricks that the usurper picked up? It is indeed a trick, as a matter of fact, Orban yelled above the screech. It's a phantasm he employs to scare people. He had to use fear tactics in the beginning when his power was ascending, and he has to fall back on them now when his power is waning. That is why it took him two years to conquer Valenwood and another thirteen to half conquer Hammerfell. No offense to you Red Guards, but it isn't only your bower, battle prowess that's been holding him back. He does not have the support that he used to have from his master. The echoing roar increased in intensity, before once again falling silent. Mankar, the Bosmer woman groaned, he comes, and he will destroy us all. His master? asked Lucar, but the Orban's eyes had gone up to the Bosmer woman curled up on her blood-soaked cot. Who is she? Orban asked Rosayana. One of the refugees, of course. From your friendly little war in Valenwood before you and Kaltos changed sides, the healer replied. I think her name is Callus. By Jeffrey, Orban whispered under his breath, limping over to the woman's cot and wiping the sweat and blood streaked hair from her pallid face. Callus, it's Orban. Do you remember me? How did you get here? Did he hurt you? Mankar, Callus moaned. That's all she says, said Rosayana. I don't know what that is, Orban frowned. Not the usurper, though she knew him too very well. She was a favorite of his. His favorites, you, Kaltos, her, all seem to turn against him, said me a guy. And that is why he will fall, replied his him. Armored footfall rang along the ceiling, and the cellar door burst open. It was the captain of Baron Orthrock's guard, Castle Guards. The docks are on fire. If you want to live, you'll need to take refuge at Castle Whitemore. 
We need help, Rosiana called back. But she knew that the guards were needed for defense, not to carry the sick to safety. With ten guards who could be spared and the most able-bodied of the wounded assisting, the cellar was empty that the, the streets of the women filled with smoke and fire began to spread through the chaos. It had been a single fireball miscast out at sea striking the docks, but the damage would be tremendous. Some hours later in the courtyard of the mighty castle, the healers were able to set up the cots and begin to once again tend to the suffering of the innocent. The first person Rosiana found was Orban Elmlock. Even with his wounds reopened, he had been able to carry two of the patients into the castle. I'm sorry, she said as she pressed her healing hands onto his wounds. I lost my temper, and I forgot that I'm a healer. Where's Callus? Orban asked. She's not here, Rosiana said, looking around. She must have run away. Run away? But wasn't she injur injured? It was not a healthy situation, but new mothers can surprise you with what they can do when it's all over. She was pregnant, Orban gasped. Yes, it wasn't a difficult birth in the end. She was holding the boy in her arms when I saw her last. She said she had done it herself. She was pregnant, Orban mur murmured again. The mistress of the Camorian usurper was pregnant. Word spread quickly throughout the castle that the battle was over, and more than that, that the war was over. Ham and Cameron's forces had been defeated at sea, and in the mountains, the Heart King was dead. Lucar watched down from the battlements into the dark woods that surrounded Dwinan. He had heard about Callus, and he imagined a desperate woman fleeing with a newborn baby in her arms into the wilderness. Callus would have nowhere to go, no one to protect them. She and her baby would be a refugee like Miak I and him had been. Reflecting back, he remembered her words. He is coming. He is coming. And he will bring death. He'll destroy us all. Luca remembered her eyes. She was sick, but not afraid. Who was this he who was coming if the Cameron usurper was dead? Did she say nothing else? asked Thorben. She told me the baby's name, Rosiana replied. Mankar. And so it is. The cycle continues. War. War never changes. <laughs> ah, a nice book that the refugees was, huh? A bit long-winded in my opinion, but uh, I did enjoy it indeed. Let us have a look through this chest and see what other secrets these uh, woodmen might be holding, hmm? Ah, conjuring a storm atronach. We must save this for a desperate situation. And of course they have uh, a bit of uh, jewelry as well. Yes, Brandar needs these things. We shall leave the iron battle axe for some other curious adventure to find. Hmm. And now let us head up into the towers. Surely there are some more of these fellows lurking about. Although they do live in a, a stone hut instead of a cave, so perhaps they're a bit more civilized, though I doubt it. One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.